Okay, in this video we're going to look at a couple of geometric applications of the cross product in terms of finding areas and volumes. So let's just recall, given two vectors A and B whose components are defined as follows, we can define the cross product to be this object, where notice we've got combinations of the components of A and B, and also it has this determinate uh, version of the definition where we have these unit basis vectors i, j, k in the first row, our vector A is in the second row, and then our vector B is in the third row. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is prove this proposition, which relates the angle between two vectors with the cross product. So notice we have A cross B, the magnitude of that vector is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta, where again, theta is the angle between A and B. So let's look at the proof of this. So we'll actually calculate the square of this equation, which allows us to um, get this equation. So here we have the magnitude of A cross B squared. So that's going to be A cross B dot A cross B. And so the fact that the magnitude squared of a vector is equal to it dot product it with itself, that's a super important fact that we can use a lot. Now the next thing uh, we want to point out is we have this following equation, which I won't prove, but it's pretty easy to prove using the definition of the cross product and the dot product. You just look at all the components, and that's here you will get the magnitude of A squared times the magnitude of B squared minus um, A dot B squared. So you get that quantity. So that's not too hard to show. But now we can apply the formula that involves the dot product and the cosine of the angle between them to write this. So here we have the magnitude of A squared, the magnitude of B squared, minus the magnitude of A squared, the magnitude of B squared times cosine theta. So that's just using the formula for the dot product and the angle between uh, two vectors. But now we can factor out a magnitude A squared, magnitude B squared. That's going to give us magnitude A squared, magnitude B squared, times 1 minus, oh, and I should have had cosine squared here, 1 minus cosine squared theta. Great, but now notice... Cosine squared, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared, so we can write this as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta, and then this entire quantity squared. And then we can just take the square root of both sides, and we have um, this equation that's in the proposition. You might say, well, we need a positive and a negative square root, but we can take theta to be between 0 and pi, so that the output of uh, sine theta is always positive, and then we get this equation. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at another result. Okay, so building off the last result, we have this following theorem. So if A and B are sides of a parallelogram, then its area is given by the magnitude of A cross B. Okay, so uh, let's sketch up what's going on here. So let's say here we have vector A, and then here we have vector B. So notice we can complete that into a parallelogram as follows, like that. So there's our parallelogram. And then recall the formula for the area of a parallelogram. If we take a height, which intersects A at um, a right angle, we call that H, then we have the area of this parallelogram is given by the magnitude of A times this height. Okay, great. But then, using some trigonometry, notice that if we say that this angle is theta, we have this is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta. And that's because sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, so it's h over um, the magnitude of b, but that allows us to uh, replace h with the magnitude of b times sine theta. But again, we just proved that this was equal to the magnitude of a cross b, which finishes the proof. Okay, good. So um, I'll clean up the board and we'll look at an application of this theorem. 
Okay, so to apply that uh, formula that we just derived, we want to find the area of the triangle in three-dimensional space with vertices A, which is the point 1, 0, 0, B, the point 0, 1, 0, and C, which is 0, 0, 1. So I've sketched it up here. Notice here we have the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So there we have A along the x-axis, B along the y, and C along the z. So notice this is a triangle that's resting in the first octant. In other words, the spot of R3 where x, y, and z are positive. Okay, so now here's what we kind of want to use here, is that if you have two vectors A and B, we had before that you can use them to define a parallelogram, but then you can take exactly half of that parallelogram and you have a triangle. So what that tells us is that we can use the cross product in order to find the area of a, of a triangle if we just include the one half there. So what we're going to need to find is this vector AB and this vector AC. And we can uh, use that to find the area of this triangle. So the area of the triangle will be one half the magnitude of vector AB cross vector AC. So again, to reiterate what's going on here, we're taking this vector right here, this vector right here, Notice our previous theorem said that if we cross product these two vectors, we get the area of the parallelogram defined by those. But then, um, being motivated by this sketch up right here, if we take half that area, we've got the triangle that we want here. Okay, good. So now this is going to be one half the magnitude of, so let's calculate AB. So that's what we get if we like subtract the point B and the point A. So that's going to give us uh, minus one, one, zero, like that. So ending at B, starting at A, and then cross minus one, zero, one. So we've got something like that. So now we need to uh, find that cross product. So this is going to be one half the magnitude of this cross product I, J, K, and then minus one, one, zero, uh, minus one, zero, one. Okay, so we've got something like that. So notice that's going to be the magnitude of one half. And now let's see what we have happening in the I direction. So crossing out in the first row in the first column, we get <clears throat> exactly one in the I direction because we have one times one minus zero times zero. Now crossing out the jth uh, column in the first row, notice we're gonna have negative one times one and zero times negative one. So we have minus one from that determinant but then there's a minus sign built into the definition of the cross product here. So that's going to give us minus one. And then finally, for K, we'll cross out here and here. And notice that our determinant now is equal to negative one times zero minus one times negative one. So that's going to be equal to one. Great, and so we have the magnitude of that vector, but now notice that's going to be one half times the square root of one squared plus negative one squared plus one squared. So that's gonna be one half times the square root of three. In other words, the square root of three over two. That is the area of this triangle. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the board, then we're gonna introduce something new called the triple product, which will allow us to find some volumes. Okay, so now we want to look at something called the scalar triple product. So given vectors a, b, and c with components as written, we define this scalar triple product to be a dot b cross c. So notice it's a scalar, hence the name scalar triple product, and that's because b cross c is a vector, but then a vector dot a vector is always a scalar. And this equal sign is actually a proposition which I won't prove, it's not too hard, and that is that this scalar triple product is just the determinant of this three by three matrix where A is in the first row, B the second, and C the third. And you actually have this nice rule which we'll see as an application of this theorem, and that is if A, B, and C are in the same plane, then the scalar triple product is zero. Okay, so now we want to prove this result. 
So if A, B, and C are vectors, they define something called a parallel pipette. So that's like a box, but it might have slanty angles instead of like a box that you would think of, which is rectangular, which, which has all 90 degrees. Then the volume is equal to the absolute value of this scalar triple product of A, B, and C. And now notice, if A, B, and C are coplanar, then it's a box that's just totally flat. It doesn't have any uh, girth to it, which would tell you that its volume should be zero, um, which is what we get if it's coplanar. Okay, great. So now let's draw a picture of our box here. Okay, so now here we have this completed into a parallel pipette. So notice here, um, we can use the formula that the volume equals the area of the base times the height. Good, but luckily we know what the area of the base is. That's going to be the magnitude of B cross C from our previous result. And now we just have to calculate the height, which is a little bit tricky. So what we'll do is we'll take this vertex right here and bring it down to a 90 degree angle along our vector B. And then let's recall that we have a name for this vector right here. And the name for that vector right there is the projection of A along the vector that is pointing in this uh, uh, perpendicular direction to B and C. In other words, the vector B cross C. So let's write, let's call this vector V maybe. And notice we have the following. So V, it is parallel to B cross C, and it is uh, the component of A that is alongside that. So here we have V is projection along B cross C of A. Okay, good, but notice we have a formula for that, and that is given by A dot B cross C over the magnitude of B cross C squared in the B cross C direction. So that's just from our projection formula. Okay, good, but now notice our height is equal to the magnitude of this vector. So that means we can get our volume is equal to this magnitude of B cross C from this part times the height, but the height is the magnitude of V, so that is going to be the absolute value of A dot B cross C over, now this is still magnitude of B cross C squared, and then we're going to have magnitude of B cross C here. But now notice, we can cancel these two guys with this, b cross c squared in the denominator, and we're left with exactly what we want um, when all is said and done. We have the volume equals the scalar triple product of a, b, and c. Okay, so that's the end of this proof. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at an example. Okay, so now let's look at an example. We want to find the volume of the parallel pipette defined by these three vectors, A, B, and C. So by our previous theorem, we know this volume is equal to the absolute value of this scalar triple product, A dot B cross C. But then, by this proposition, which is just technical that we did not prove, that's going to be equal to the absolute value of the determinant of this matrix. So we can have the absolute value of the determinant of the matrix whose rows are given by these vectors A, B, C. So we have minus 1, minus 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, and 0, minus 5, minus 2. Good. But now we can expand by the first row. So that's going to give us the absolute value. And then expanding down here like that, we'll have negative 1 times the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix in the lower right. So that's going to be 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 minus 2 times negative 5, which is 10. So we have 10 minus 6. So that is 4. 
Great. And then we have a minus sign built into the situation and then expanding about this second column in this first row, that two right there. So we have a negative two because that is at that intersection. And then we have four times negative two minus two times zero. So that's just going to be negative eight. Okay. And then finally, uh, against the last column, so we have there that one, and then our determinant is given by four times negative five, so that's going to be plus one times negative 20. And then we take the absolute value of that whole thing. But now notice here we have negative four, negative 16, and then negative 20, so that's negative 40. We take the absolute value and get 40, so the volume of this pi parallel pipette is 40. Okay, that's the end of this video.